Hi everyone, welcome to lesson three of our humanities unit for year eight. Today our learning intention is that students will be able to explain the process of the passing of a bill through parliament. Our learning activities for today, you should have already watched the YouTube video Parliament of Victoria Explains How Parliament Makes Laws just by clicking on the link. And now we are going to read pages 488 to 489 in your textbook together. So let's get started. So on, we're on chapter 25.2, Statutory Law. Australia's laws can come about in two ways. Statutory laws are those that are made and passed by Parliament. Common law is created when a judge has to make a ruling about a case that is not covered by statutory law. Statutory laws can be passed by both state and federal parliaments. The state parliament can only pass laws affecting their own state, such as the legal driving age in that state. The federal parliament, on the other hand, can pass laws that apply to the entire nation, such as the rules about becoming an Australian citizen. So let's have a read of the section called passing a statutory law. So there's quite a few steps in here that we're going to go through together. Both federal and state parliaments follow similar steps to pass a statutory law. The following looks at how a bill is passed through federal parliament. So the first step is the preparation of a bill. A bill is a formal document that is prepared as a draft act or law. It is proposed by a member of parliament who are also known as MPs, when people feel the need to change an existing law or establish a new one. The bill only becomes a law if and when it has been approved in the exact same form by both Houses of Parliament and the Governor General. So it has to go through two Houses of Parliament and the Governor General in order to become a law. So we'll come back to this source. We're just going to keep going with the um, process of um, passing a statutory law. So we've done the first step. Let's have a look at the second step. So the first reading. After giving prior notice to Parliament that a bill will be discussed, the MP, remember the Member of Parliament, who is introducing the bill will provide a copy of the Draft Act to every other MP. At this stage, only the title of the bill is read giving the other members a chance to read the bill in their own time. Then our third step, the second reading debate. In the second reading, the member who introduced the bill explains why the bill has been introduced. The other members are then allowed to ask questions, make suggestions for changes and debate whether the bill is the right way to tackle the issue that it aims to address. Because laws are such an important part of, our, of how our society functions, this debate can often get quite heated with members passionately arguing their different opinions on the issue. In the end, the members will vote on the bill and any changes to it, which if passed, goes on to the third reading. So, so far, the MP that drafted the bill they have given it to the other MPs for them to read in their own time. Then the second reading debate, they all have, they can all discuss it, talk about um, any changes they might have or they might want to see. And then they vote on it, whether they think it's the right way to deal with the issue. And then if that gets passed, we move on to the fourth step, which is the third reading. After having some more time to consider the details of the bill and any changes resulting from the second reading, the House of Representatives will vote on the bill. If the majority vote to pass the bill, it will move to the Senate for consideration. So now we move on to the fifth step. So it moves from the lower House of Parliament up to the higher House of Parliament. So we go to the Senate. Once it reaches the Senate, the bill will go through the three reading stages again. So it goes through the first reading, second reading and third reading, but this time it's being done by the people that are part of the Senate. 
The bill will be passed to and from the upper and lower houses until both agree to any changes in the bill or until the Senate rejects the bill completely. So it can go through these three um, steps here quite often. So it might happen first, it's in the House of Representatives, which is the lower house. It goes to the first reading, second reading, third reading. It then goes to the Senate. They do a first reading, a second reading and a third reading. Then they might go, to put it back to the lower house. We go, we want these changes. We don't agree to these changes. So then the House of Representatives will again do the first reading, second reading, third reading. So it can take a very long time to pass a bill in Parliament. That's why sometimes it takes quite a while to get new laws or to change old laws. So the Senate can then agree with the lower house and say, yes, these are the changes that we want. This is the final bill. We agree to this. Or they can reject it completely and say, we do not want this bill. So it, if they agree on it, it moves to the Governor General, which is the next step. If they reject it, it gets rejected and it doesn't go on to the Governor General. So then the final step is the Governor General. If the bill is passed by both houses, the Governor General, as the Queen's representative, will review and approve the law by giving the bill royal assent. Assenting the law is usually just a formality as none of the Queen's Governor Generals have ever refused to assent a law in the past. Now remember, if there's a word in our textbook that is highlighted or in bold, sorry, not highlighted, it means that there's a definition in the glossary at the back of the book. So if you're using the PDF version of the textbook, you can do the same as me and click right through to the end till you see the glossary. If you are using a hard copy textbook, like your actual textbook, it's on page 504. But let's have a look at what the definition for royal assent is. Might give us a little bit more information than what's already in the textbook. So let's have a look. Royal assent. A bill is given approval by the Governor General as a representative of the Crown to become official law. So the Governor General, as we are still part of the Commonwealth, the Queen of England and of Britain and of the Commonwealth, has a representative in Australia. They are known as the Governor General. Now, let me just get back up to, there we go. So they are known as the Governor General. So they give the, um, approve the law as the Queen's representative, but as it says here, um, there has never been a time where they do not approve of the law. Um, it's usually just a formality. So it means that it's just, um, basically it's what it's doing is it's just, showing that we have that um, the Queen as our highest level. But as we said, it's just a formality. No law has ever been stopped by the Governor General so far. So let's have a look. We've just had a read of those two pages. So now what you have to do is in a Word document, find meanings for the following laws, sorry, the following words related to statutory law. And remember, we just read about statutory law. That is laws that are made by the Parliament. So your words are Parliament, Federal, Bill, Act, Statute, Vote, Debate. Now, you can use your textbook to find some definitions for these words, or you can use Google to find definitions of these words. Um, if you use Google, make sure that you are finding the legal definitions, because sometimes when you look at a definition for a word, it shows you multiple definitions. So we want to make sure we're doing ones that have um, are related to legal um, ideas, okay? And then the last task for today, in the same Word document, complete questions one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven from your textbook on page 489. Use the information from the textbook reading to support your answers. So that is these questions here. So remember and understand, what are the two types of laws in Australia and how do they come about? Question two. Who can pass statutory laws? Question three, what is the role of the Governor General when it comes to passing a law? Question four, why do you think the Governor General needs to provide a royal assent? So these two questions, one and two, the answer for those um, 
questions is in the first paragraph. These first two paragraphs here, that's where that information for question one and two is. For question three and four, the answer can be found in this paragraph here. But question four is getting you to think about it in your own way. So it's your opinion. Why do you think, based off the information that's present, put in, in this paragraph, why do you think the Governor General needs to provide a royal assent? And then five, six, and seven, we have, why do you think that the only the title of the bill is read out in the first reading? Question six, what is the purpose of a third reading if the members have already voted on the bill during the second reading? And question seven, look at source two, what was the purpose of the Australia Act 1986? So these ones get you to think a little bit more, but what I would do is go to the part where the information is being discussed. So why do you think that only the title of the bill is read out in the first reading? Have another quick read of the paragraph on first reading. What is the purpose of a third reading if the members have already voted on the bill during the second reading? Maybe have a read of the third reading. Or have a read of the last bit of the second reading. And then look at source two, what is the purpose of the Australia Act 1986? We can have a look at that source together now. So source two, the Australia Act 1986 was passed in the parliaments of both Australia and the United Kingdom. It eliminated any possibility of UK legislation affecting Australian law. So you have to remember that we used to be part of the United Kingdom long, long while ago. So you, um, before Australia was made as a nation, we used to um, we used to follow the um, laws of England. Now, even though we were made a nation after we were made a nation, from then on, UK legislator, which means their law, still had an impact on Australia. We still did things based on the UK and the United Kingdom and their laws. So then this act here, says that it eliminated any possibility of UK legislation or UK law um, affecting Australian law. Perfect. And we'll just, as the last little thing today, we'll go back up to this source, which we just skipped over earlier. So Sir Source 1, on 1st of June 2015, Leader of the Opposition Bill Shorten introduced the Marriage Equality Bill, which proposed to amend the Marriage Act's current definition of marriage being exclusively between a man and a woman. The bill was voted down in the House of Representatives by 98 votes against 42 in favour. So this means, um, so this was Bill, Bill Shorten attempting to um, pass a bill through the House of Representatives. So remember that's the lower house, it goes to the upper house, the Senate afterwards. Alrighty, so again, once you've completed that, upload it to the learning, remote learning task term two, week two. Um, attempt everything to the best of your ability. If you don't get all the questions answered in one period, but you have attempted majority of them, that is great. We just want you to engage with the learning and get use the knowledge from the textbook in order to make some understanding of the questions that we're asking. So I hope you all have a lovely um, period and happy learning.